Well, g'day, folks, and it's been a while since I've done a uh, a bit of a, a casual convo. Um, during the winter months, we sort of go and do other things, but I'm really excited to be having a chat again with Mario Lang from Lake Eildon Rowing Club. Mario, thanks for joining me. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, for inviting me, Guy. It's been uh, it's been great to uh, have met you. I don't know when it was a few years back, and. Yeah. Uh, and well, to, well, you, you, to... you wouldn't you wouldn't remember when it originally was because uh, I wasn't of too much of a threat to you in the single skulls because I, mean, I, I did uh, I did race it back in, I think it was in even in your Karam days that's how long ago um, yeah. but but uh, I don't think you're worried about who I was at that point in time <laughs> 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 what, what we're going to chat about today is obviously the Grand Ponderosa Cup coming up but before we get onto that I just had, I've just had a scan on your Facebook. Um, and what a ripping photo you've posted today. Or someone yeah. posted it on your timeline or something. And, yeah, what I is posted, that one? That's a photo taken at Pepin Point, which is uh, sort of near Bonnie Doon. Right. And you can see the lake and it's absolute glass and it's yeah. overlooking Mount Bula in the background, which is uh, snow capped at the yeah. moment. Oh, it's one of the greatest photos I think I've seen of the area. Sadly, we'll come and talk. We'll be talking about the Ponderosa Cup shortly, but uh, I will be in the background of that uh, photo on that weekend, unfortunately. But uh, you'll be skiing. Oh, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my uh, well, if I said my other true love, you'd probably say triathlon. But it's uh, snow skiing is my number one true love, and we have our uh, club championships that weekend. So we're trying to do something a little bit different. But anyway, we'll come back Fair to enough. that all later. Hey. Um, now you're a, you're a man of, of much knowledge, and I don't want to put you on the spot, and I don't want to say anything wrong myself here. Um, the Olympics, the uh, the Rosellas, as they've called themselves. What's uh, what? What do you think? And, and again, with full respect to all the athletes and all those, yeah. Things, but we've got we can't hide from the fact that it's a pretty disappointing result, isn't it? It is a very disappointing result because um, you know the, these people. I mean, they're great athletes, and yeah. And it's a very intense process they have to go through to actually be selected in a crew, yep. and uh, and then they actually have a such a an intense training season. They're all put away in these training camps in, uh, you know, in Nepean and uh, in Canberra, yep. and yep. they train three times a day. They have nutritionists. They have, you know, strength conditioning coaches. They have, you know, the constant coaching going on there and. Yep. It's unbelievable that uh, we couldn't make a top three finish, you know, except no. in the pairs. Yeah. Um, and you look at uh, the resources we have available. So I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I thought maybe the, there was a change in the coaches. I mean, you know, yeah. Change from the last Olympics and was it Ian Wright that was their last coach? I, I, I don't know, and I, I don't particularly want to get into the blame game. Into either, the names, but, yeah. but, but you know, that's that's sort of. I mean, look, one thing I, I, and I might be right, way off track here, but it just looked to me as though um, our, and when I say our, I'm generalising across all crews, is that our um, um, technical style was a bit more old school. Um, yeah. Some of these these other crews, and I don't want to, you know, Romania, a great example, been doing it for years, but, you know, and I'm not saying you have to rate high to win a race, but um, there certainly seems to be a lot more of the upright, quicker, you know, mm. that, that, uh, and, and, and that obviously requires a level of fitness to be able to do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're all fit. They're all bloody super elite athletes. Yeah. I don't know. That was sort of my take on it, that maybe maybe we're a bit behind the times and we've rested on our laurels of our old school theories. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, rating is definitely one of those things you notice. You know, the Australian crews, after 500 metres, they sort of seem to drop the rating two or three points lower than the, yeah. than the leading crews that were in the top three spots, you know. Yeah. Um, and so they kept their rating two or three points lower for most of the race and they brought it up at the end, but it was too late. Yeah. Uh, too little, too late by that stage. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of yeah, the same. Think, that's you're sort of saying the same thing. I, I didn't just stick. I didn't, didn't want to hang my hat just on the rating thing. But but that's an yeah. old school thing, isn't it? Go out hard, settle down and then finish off strong. Whereas the Romanians just stay up there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they do. They do. That's that's the. Um, that's the new way. Everybody's going for more rating, mm. and uh, and keeping it up over forty. You know, for, you know, in an eight. It's crazy, yeah. isn't it? Jeez. Yeah, but they do. I I don't know how they. 
whether they um, shorten up a little bit, you know, or they well, boost think, it I up a little bit. I think they do. Bit. And yeah. if you look at, um, you know, the, the freak, I use the word politely and with complete respect, but Ollie Zeidler in the single, um, mm. I mean, he's obviously a machine of a, of, a, of a man, but he seems to be, he looks a little bit shortish, but I mm. suppose of the size of him. But, I don't, you know, and, and he's rating super high too. In the, I mean, some yeah. of the singles, I don't know how they, how they get up there, but, but again, it has yeah. to be, they have to, be, have to be shortening up a little bit to do it. So. Uh, look, the other, the other team to watch as well is the, the, um, the Netherlands, you know, oh, yeah. and, I was, yes. and, uh, and I think they were racing in the quad, the girls' quad, and uh, there was a commentator from England who was given the, the commentating, and he was saying, you know, how they train so different in the Netherlands. They have this long distance, slow rating for most of their training. Yeah. And the English are much more high intensity. And he was saying, you know, and I mean, the English came back in the end and they yeah. won that particular race, but the Netherlands did very well. well they had a lot of wins and, yeah. you know, all, you know, third top three place getting uh, in lots of races. So I'm also wondering about the training, um, the training methodology that we have here, whether it's, whether it's a bit like the Netherlands or is it more like the English, which with the high intensity. Well, I think the, um, and if I, if I cross over into other sports here, um, <clears throat> the lower intensity concept is, is fine. And like, if you look at someone like, oh, let's, let's go right off the track here to, uh, to uh, Marathon and Eliud Kipchoge, who's a, a freak of Marathon. Um, he says 80% of his work is done at uh, zone two. So low intensity, long work. But the point that, that is missed with that conversation is the amount of workload he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if, if, if like the Netherlands, we don't know how many hours a day yeah. are they actually on the water versus Great Britain, if that makes sense. Yeah. So to compare, oh, that's a better methodology. There needs to be a lot more information as to <clears throat> how yeah. many hours you're investing in it. Yeah. And yeah. also, I, I suppose, you know, I guess the, I like the long distance, low intensity training. If you can work on your technique, because I noticed yeah. a lot of the Netherlands crews, they're just such beautiful technique, you know, yeah. very relaxed in the upper body. Yeah. The case in point is the is the men's quad that yeah. looked so way so just so relaxed and and uh, on top of things, you know. Yeah. And they just they would hardly you could they were hardly they hardly looked like they were making an effort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't that, that's, that's the amazing thing when you're watching these rowers and when the camera, and what's so good these days, the cameras are so close up on them. Yeah, and you look yeah. and go, how relaxed can they be? They're in a world of hurt. We, we know how much they're hurting. Well, yeah. they probably hurt more than we can imagine. Um, but, but they're just there so so chilled about it all. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, I've got uh, two kilometres of this. We'll just strap yeah. in there for the ride. And, and yeah. that's only the race we're looking at, and that's the thing that... that um, the average punter who watches a little bit of rowing might uh, not appreciate is, and you you broached on it a second ago, is the amount of work that goes into it before the race. It's not, we're, we're just looking at the race. It's the beauty of the Olympics. Oh yeah, they just rock up and do that. But the amount of work, yeah. the, amount of, the amount of ergos where they've sat on that thing and just, you know, torn into it. Yeah, that. just, that's oh, right. God. Anyway, well, let's not let's not spend too long talking about that. It'll be interesting to see what does happen in the uh, international rowing space for Australia. Yeah, but I heard there's an inquiry going on about the rowing program yeah. in Australia. I heard it yeah. was announced today. Yeah, I, I did see that, um, mm. and it'll be interesting to see what comes out. I'm not a big fan of the blame game. I mean, you look at the Matildas no. in soccer, and uh, you know their coach. And, and I'm not an expert in soccer, of course, but but mm. you know, their coach who got them up to where they did in the World Cup. And then they'd have a lousy uh, Olympic campaign, and bang, first one to go. I'm like, but yeah. on. didn't he? Hasn't he been around a few years? Didn't he get them to that height height that they were at? Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. You know? So yeah. it could also be that they picked at the wrong time because I know they yeah. they did well at the last World Cup. Yeah, didn't they? And Tara yeah, Rigney right. ended up winning, and so they and they've they done a right since. You know. Yeah, they're great to watch. I love it. Actually, one thing I don't want to get too much off track here. But I, mm. I loved um, certainly up until the other day that Australia's were, Australia was leading the charge on the women's medal count quite comfortably, oh, like yeah. across against against all nations, not just you know. Wow! And, uh, and I think we didn't get our first male gold medal until three days ago. So wow! <laughs> so the, the women yeah. have uh, you know they're the ones we've got to be investing in. I reckon when it comes to the sport, they've been doing a great job. 
Rowing's well, they, a, rowing's a good one with that, isn't it? I mean, it's 50 50. Yeah. Rowing. Well, the girls do really well in rowing. They sort of, yeah, yeah they and and it's so popular in in uh, in yeah. schools. Oh, god, well, there's yeah. school girls rowing. We know that, we, we, yeah, we know that. it's fantastic, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And we'll be discussing that again on this podcast very soon with uh, Alan Prout and Binky Kafuri when we start uh, looking at the season ahead on that one. Now, let's get yeah. into something much more exciting. Mm. The Rosa Cup. Tell tell me where the idea, what all that was about. Tell, give us the uh, fill us in on on where it all came from and why we are at this point. Well, you know, the Lake Gildan Rowing Club was established in uh, February 2023, and um, and one of the bits of water there that's actually I, I every time you drive past it you think oh i wish i was out there rowing or sculling on that bit of water it's called the, the lake Ilden pondage yep. which is a body of water that comes out of lake Ilden, and yep. uh the water comes out of the bottom of the of the wall uh that holds the the lake and uh it's sort of held in these lakes in this pondage to um uh before it's released into the Goulburn River, and uh, oh, okay. they use it. They use it for hydroelectricity. So they they release a certain amount at night, and during the day they let it fill up again, and then at night they let it go again. Yep, yep. Um, so, but the thing about this bit of water is that no boats are allowed on it ever. You know, right. so uh, they have a lot of fish, big trout that they put in there, and people can go fishing, and they get their trophy trout out and whatever. And there's a caravan park next to it but no boats are ever allowed on it. So, um, except once a year, a few years back, the wakeboard, wakeboard championships were held oh, yeah. there. Yep, yep. And now, and ever since then, people are saying, well, why can we have boats in there? Why can yep. we have canoes or kayaks and, and rowing I boats thought, in I would have there? thought rowing boats and canoes and kayaks are a bit more user-friendly than wakeboards to uh, <laughs> an environment like that. But, hey, just to clarify, Murray, that's that is down the Eildon end, isn't it? Not the Bonnie Doon end. Yes, Eildon yep. in Eildon yep. Township. Yep. And of course, if you think back to the few years, um, you know, a few years ago, we had a, that massive drought that dropped the levels yep. of Lake Eildon down to like 15% or something. Yep. I, I drove across under the bridge, actually. I remember clearly driving my car from one end to the other under the bridge. Which, the bridge at Bonnie Doon? The Bonnie Doon Bridge, yep. yep. Wow. Yep, so that's, that would be more than 15 years. I reckon that's about 25 years ago. Would that be right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, it was a shocking drought. It was a shocking drought. And yeah. then that really killed off a lot of the businesses uh, mm. in Lake Ilden. You know, they yeah. had houseboats, was big, and people used to go on holidays there a lot. So the town is really taking a beating, you know, after that. And it's just trying to get itself back up. Yeah. So one of the ideas that we had with the council was to basically bring, bring some events onto the pondage to, you know, bring people back into the town and, and create, you know, more of a tourism atmosphere and whatever. Yep, yep. And um, so the council was behind it and they kind of were sort of giving me the idea, you know, you should do this. And I said, yep, no worries, you know. So um, there's lots of possibilities there. Bondage would be an ideal place to have a rowing club. Yep. Uh, better than Lake Ilden because you don't have, you know, the jet skis. Yeah, yeah. And, the distraction boats yeah which mm. in summertime can be quite you know annoying when you're in a in a boat out there um and it's got a uh, lots of other things there's a there's a cricket club that's like over 100 years old this cricket club yeah. and it, it hasn't <laughs> been used for the last 30 years it's just completely empty yeah and uh, so i've gone to council and i've said you know what about if we turn this cricket club into a rowing club so there is a yeah. bit of that could wow. happen down the track wow. yeah and I've been in touch with uh, Cindy McLeish, who's the member for Lake Ilden. And yep. she, um, I, I'm not sure of the upper house or lower house, or I get confused, but she's um, she's behind it as well. So this could be the start of something, you know. Yeah. That's why, that's why I wanted to organize it, because um, I feel there's a certain uh, momentum that has to be taken advantage of, you know, for uh, for better things to happen for the Lake Ilden Rowing Club. So. Um, this is this will be a come and try event. So I've, I've yep. talked to Roe in Victoria. Roe in Victoria is behind it. They're happy to endorse it as long as it's a it's a come and try event. So it's not yep. an official regatta. Yep. Uh, we want to make that clear. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that it's for people to come and try and see what it's like to row, 
yep. on this beautiful bit of water and yep. to actually see what the whole area has to offer, which there's lots of things, you know, there's yeah. Yeah. biking tracks in the mountain and then there's, and then you can go for a row in the lake as well. And, um, and it's just a beautiful environment, you know, with fresh air and beautiful views and, and there's lots of fish in the water as well. So you can, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gleaning from you, uh, on this conversation, Mario, that, uh, that you've got far bigger picture than just uh, a race on the 31st of August. You're thinking of, uh, you're thinking of um, uh, akin to a Rutherglen or a Dimbula type weekend, aren't you? Yes, that yeah. would be the that would be great. You yeah. know, if we can if we can have a two day regatta down the track, mm. um, and you know, this, we're starting with singles. In this, yep. it's a handicap race, so we, we're going to set them off. I'm not sure. It depends on the number of entries I get. You know, yep. if I get a low number of entries, say 20 or 30, then I'm only going to I'm going to let them off every 20 seconds. Yep. But if I get 40 or 50 or 60 entries, and we'll go every 10 seconds, we'll set them yep. off. Yeah. And we'll go, yeah. And uh, and the idea is, well, we start with the singles this year, and then next year we might add some quads, and yeah. And the year after that, we'll keep going, and maybe one day we'll have an eights race. Yeah. Uh, on the lake. Which yeah. you know would be great to have a race on the lake because it's there's so much water you could do there. You could do like a ten kilometer race or a fourteen right. kilometer yeah. race, yeah. and yes. you know have all the eights going side by side and not have to yeah. you know worry. Don't have about, to worry about a big bend like head of the yard. A big bend, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> It'll straight. be easier on the coxswain. Yeah. <laughs> a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, no, this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, one thing people will straight away say, Lake Elon, geez, that's a fair way away, but it's actually not, is it? It's closer than, it's certainly closer than Ballarat, it's closer than Nagambi, and it's probably yeah. about the same as Geelong for most. So yeah. it's, it's not a it's not a big effort to shoot down there to do a uh, to do a row, is it? No, look, it's really only two hours from Melbourne. Yeah. 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 So um, two that's hours. Yeah. yeah, and, and I, I was... I was uh, surprised by how many people, you know, didn't know their, how far away it was. And many ha think it's a long distance, but it's yeah. only two hours. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, so you could do it in a day. You could just come up, you know, leave at five in the morning, be here by seven. Yep. Or leave at six, be here by eight. And then, you know, have your race. Be done by, we'll be done by 10, 30, 11. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll have coffee, a coffee van in the at the place. We'll have some egg and bacon rolls ready to go and uh, yeah. we've got some yeah and then at night we're going to have a, a big party at uh, there's a place called pixies on the billabong oh yeah yeah and um and they have live bands they've got in excess playing on on the 31st of <laughs> august ah. so michael apparently uh michael hatchins the uh the lead singer was uh was basically you know found in one of those houseboats in lake hill and he's coming coming out from his uh, grave. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, where, are you, where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> He's come out of the grave yeah, yeah, and yeah. play for us uh, on the 31st. <laughs> yeah, well, so no, it's a couple of really, I mean, the focus this time around is still to make a weekend of it, isn't it? Yes, yeah. you know, it is. Yeah. So uh, there's a few, quite a lot of people who are doing that. They're going to stay for the party and then the yep. next day they're going to go for another row. Yeah. Because I've actually booked the Pondage for two days. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So if I can't get the race happening on Saturday because of weather, which oh, yeah. it's unlikely, yeah. um, then we can still go for the Sunday, you know. And uh, there's not we, too yeah. many, too much weather that stops rowers, is there? Though, to be fair, no, it's that's the thing. Pretty yeah, grim say, to slow down rowers. That's right. So yeah, scholars especially, they're amazing. You know, they yeah. row right through winter. They put oh. the beanies on. Oh, yeah. We just think, you know, we don't no, we don't care about the cold. We just go, you know, we're going to get warm in the water. We just row and get warm. That's it. <laughs> and get warm if you tip over. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's certainly, uh, you know, I've got the photo here that I'm looking at. I mean, it's certainly a lot more enticing than the Yarra and the old uh, winter sculling and, uh, and all that yeah. sort of stuff. I mean, if the weather's nice, wow. You know. You, you, yeah. yeah. It, look, and the thing about the pondage, which is another factor that I was – thinking about it, it's the water's always calm you know like yeah. i've been past many times and it's always calm yep so almost 90 percent. you know I've, I've spoken to some of the locals that say oh yeah there's been some times and you could see a few waves but most of the time it's very sheltered yep and because you've got the lake wall on one side and you've got mountains on either side and it yeah. just creates this beautiful space calm. that's uh, 
calm water is, yeah. uh, is, is what we want. And the course is four and a half kilometers long, and we're starting at um, sort of uh, the Goulburn River end, yeah. and then rowing, rowing sort of upstream. There's a little, there's a bridge that you have to go under this bridge, and then around a couple of boys yeah. turn back, and then there's an island that you got to go around, and then make your way back, uh, back down, and then turn and finish in front of this rotunda, which is where the crowds will be. We'll be lining we'll up be to see who finishes yeah yeah and and on the uh on the links off the uh website um i think you've got maps there too haven't you somewhere yeah there's a link to the map yeah, yeah it's all it's all yeah. on there lots of information and and there's even a, a, a most importantly a, a countdown timer clock to tell us there's 25 days three hours six minutes and eight seconds until race start <laughs> i'll tell you what that's putting pressure on you you want to get your race start away if, uh, <laughs> people will be watching that one um, yeah, <laughs> I, I love the name Grand Ponderosa Cup. That's brilliant. yeah. So the Grand Ponderosa Cup, you know, that was, um, you know, the name we, we kept going back and forth with the name. You know, yeah, it was the, the Il, Lake Ilden Flatwater Classic was yep. my original idea. Yep. And then I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who you might know. His name is Paul Summer, Summerfield uh, Somerville. Yep, yep, yep. And. Yep. Um, and Paul has been a great supporter of the Lake Gildan Rowing Club from its He's, uh, he's from up north. He's Rutherglen, isn't he? Um, Rutherglen. He's the yeah. president of Rutherglen. So, yeah, yeah. And um, he's been a great supporter. So he's bringing the boys that we're going to use on the course. And he's helping me with lots of the organization and the permits and all that stuff, you know, to get through. Yep. Um, and he said, Mario, that's a boring name. You should go for yeah. something more exciting like the Rosa. We looked up the, uh, you know, I've got a bit of a Spanish background. Oh, yeah, background. right, right. So it's red or something, isn't it, I suppose? Rosa. Ponderosa, it actually means the weighty one. It's a weighty one. It's a oh. big thing, you know. Oh, uh, right, right, right. It's in big thing. Yeah, right. It's in yeah. big, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So the, the grand, huge cup. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Okay. And then, then the, the pond obviously just slid in there. And then that's right. And it's got to do put with the, the two pondage. together and when bang, light bulb goes off. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, so and because of this, you know, a bit of the Spanish uh, thing to it, you know, it kind of fits in with my background and yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it's it's a great name, and I mean, hopefully, it will you know be there for years to come. You know, this will be just the beginning of this perpetual thing. Yep, yep. And uh, sure. we'll keep it going for as long as we can, and then we'll pass it on to the next generation. I've got my kids. I've got two sons, and they're both coming to help and. Yep. One of them, Jeremy, is doing really well in the single, so he should yes, be racing I'm, on that. I've been so. noticing that. Yeah. That's, I'll tell you what, Mario, that's his triathlon background there, you see. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, he's, he's definitely, uh, he's, he did triathlons and he loved them, but he's just fallen in love with with sculling and yeah. uh, because of the technical aspect. And, you know, and then there's all the training, different methodologies. He loves all that stuff. And yeah. He's also into the technology, so... Um, yeah, there's all these apps you can get that you can put oh, on your phone yeah. and show you all sorts of things. And... Yep, yep. So he's I, really I, I, loving I, it. Yeah, no, that's great. That's good because, I mean, it's it's a perfect sport for all that sort of stuff, isn't it? I mean, when, yeah, when we yeah. previously chatted some time ago and you were talking about your history in rowing and how you got started off off young and obviously you're, uh, you're, you're, you're introducing your boys to the same thing. Yeah, look, I thought that rowing was is a great a protective sport you know it kind of makes you focus on good things in life you know and like yeah. how to go faster and how to get healthier how to get fitter yeah and it also brings you close to to uh good friends you know yeah. like the people you row with and it's a beautiful community you know and i found yeah. that same thing where i, I rode in chile yep. for like i don't know many years maybe eight years i was rowing there since i was nine till i was 16 and I, I'm still friends with those people from back yeah. there. And, you know, and wherever you go in the world, you, you meet rowers and they always sort of go, oh, come and row with us, you know, come yeah. and have a row. And so it's, it's, it's a very uh, embracing community, isn't it? It is, because we all kind of, we all, we all touched on why mm. it's such a beautiful sport, you know, and it's got a spiritual aspect to it. Yeah. I was reading the book, um, Boys in the Boat. Oh, yeah, yes. And I've seen the movie, and, I, yeah. and there's a whole chapter. It's called "Touching the Divine." <laughs> ah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, and I have, I've only seen the movie. I haven't read the book, but um, yeah, it's actually the I book is really good. You know, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but it talks about that. You know, it talks about how when you row, you actually 
to be a good rower, you actually have to go beyond yourself and into that in, and learn to trust the blades into the oh. water and also and sort of almost become one with the boat and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. You know, and that's really the, the best way, the way to go fast is to, to do that, you know. And when you when and, you watch the elite guys as we were talking about before, you can actually see that, can't you? Yeah, you can. <laughs> How relaxed you gotta be. Yeah. Yeah. But your leg you, it's like the duck, you know, they always say no. that yeah. you know above the water it looks so calm and under the water is kicking oh, man, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah especially as they're getting out of the way of boats rowing down on them <laughs> as, as, as happens regularly and the geese yeah. too but anyway yeah. no that's that's great so uh the date the 31st so what's that three weeks away yeah 25 days three oh, hours I just and eight said, seconds didn't I? I, I, <laughs> oh, what am i even doing i said exactly 25 days so three, yeah, it's three, weeks. Bit, three weeks away so <clears throat> Um, yeah, look, it's, it's, it'd be great to get a, a, a big turnout of, of, uh, people, scullets, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, you can put your boat on your roof rack and yeah. drive over to Lake Gildan and, and then, you know, do your row and then have a bacon and egg roll with a coffee and, uh, then yep. you can stay for the party. Absolutely. You know, in the afternoon you could, you could just go and, you know, do a bike ride or something. I go to a winery. There's heaps of wineries around. Yeah, here. there is a bit around the area, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, I've never spent any time down the Eild and End. I've only sort of driven over the sort of the Bonnie Doon Bridge and so forth. I've, it's a, it's an area I'd love to explore much more. I just a shame the timing doesn't work for me this time. But I'll certainly be there in the future because I, this this is not a one off. That's for sure. Yeah. No, we will definitely have more events. You know, this yeah. is just the beginning. Yeah. No, um, no, we it. hope to have some training camps on the track. And, mm. I mean, if the Pondage opens up and becomes a place that you can row, I mean, it will be, it's just going to be amazing. I mean, you can have, oh, there's a bit, there's a three kilometer straight you can have there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that's plenty of water to have yeah. a, to have a, ra a regatta or have a oh, some yeah. training camps. And, yeah. And you, there's a bike track that goes right around it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so there's just it's great for spectators, you know, yep. because you can see the race from start to finish. You can see the whole thing. Yeah, the water's always good. So, the, and there's accommodation. There's the caravan park that you can just walk, you know, from the from there to the caravan park. Yep. Yep. Uh, so you could have potentially school groups coming up and doing training uh, on the pondage, but we have to get the. Um, we have to get Murray Goulburn water uh, to actually get behind it because there's yeah. been a lot of resistance from them oh, and also right. from um, AGL because AGL, the electricity company, uses yeah. their pondage to generate electricity and and it, the, the flows can change depending on how much electricity they need, you know. Right. But, right. you know, it's, it's nothing you can't uh, overcome, you know. There's just communication issues and things like that. Sure. But um, anyway, the... the the word these, in, things, these things are just work in progress, aren't they? I mean, you've got yes, this far, yes, you can get yes. them on side. Yeah, and the, and the this lady, <laughs> the government has people have told me, you know, if, if certain if the liberals get elected, <laughs> if, yeah. this is the promise, you know, yeah, if yeah. the liberals get elected, we will have rowing on the pondage. <laughs> you know. Oh, well, so, there, you go, you there know. you go, rowing community. There's your call to arms, but. Uh... <laughs> So you know who I'll be voting for next. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, but I think most of the rowing community probably do anyway. Not to not to judge. <laughs> and I've just I've just followed off your off your website that link to Homes Glen at Eildon. Gee, that looks like an impressive place. It'd be yeah, nice to stay is, up there, yeah. wouldn't it, for the night? <laughs> Look, there is that place, and I've also been contacted by the um, the Rubicon Hotel, oh, yeah, and yeah. and they have a courtesy bus. So you know, so you can have the party at Pixies, which is at Eildon. Oh, yeah. And then get driven back to your uh, back back to your, mo your hotel room. Oh, mm. I think it's a motel type accommodation. Yeah, the yep. Rubicon Hotel. Yep. And uh, and then get dropped off at your doorstep. You know, so so it, it will be a great night. You know, if you if you look, you're going to be in Mambula. I reckon you can take <laughs> come the down trip. for the night. Come down for the night, mate. Just come down and have a party with us. Um, Pixies. Mate, mate, but I might need to be at presentations if the of the, uh, the club racing, you know, if, if, if oh, it yeah, goes okay. well, you know. Yeah, well, you are <laughs> a exactly. champion in many sports. I can see <laughs> yeah, that. I don't know about that. 
<laughs> we, we try, we try. No, look, this, this has been great, Murray. I really appreciate the chat, and um, we'll give it a bit of a bit of a rev up. And mm. I mean, no doubt, um, the future is huge for rowing on Lake Eild, and, and your your passion is obviously instrumental in making that happen. Uh, well, yeah. it wouldn't happen without you. There's no two ways about that. We wouldn't even be talking about this. Um, so you've done an absolutely, you know, ripping, ripping job um, of getting. Look, all I wanted to do is I wanted to go rowing on Lake Ilden. That's yeah. what I. It all started there, and I thought, yeah. well, I can row by myself, but wouldn't it be great to have a to have a quad on this lake, you know? And, yeah. and then, and that's how it started, you know, just a, a passion for being able to share this sport with other people, and this beautiful part of the world, you know, which is just, you know, there's so much water there. There's yeah. It's just it's it's just uh it's calling for people to come and row on it. I can't believe that we haven't had this uh um, hasn't, hasn't happened yet, you know. No. And uh so but now this there's, there's it's looking more and more likely that we um that it's it's going to be huge. It's gonna be much bigger than it is now. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I'm just wondering if I Google Lake Yield and Rowing Club, I am sure you guys will come up and we can get links from that pretty easily, can't we, to uh, to find out more information. There it is on Facebook. Plenty of plenty of info, easy to find links to uh, to enter. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so it looks- here's, a, here's an interesting question, and it's not in yeah. relation necessarily to this, but I'm just totally a bit off track, but do you need to be a, a club member to, do, to, to come up and, and join in the festivities. If I have a single skull at home, for argument's sake, I don't, I'm just wondering. Um, can I turn up and um, have a paddle? Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah. you know, insurance, if you're a member of any club, you're, yeah. uh, you're insured through Rowing Victoria. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then you can come up and, and you don't have to be a member of uh, Lake Yildon Rowing Club. Yep. The same thing for this regatta, you know, as long as you're a member of a rowing club, then you can enter uh, in the in the website that I've set up and yep. I've sent around. Um, there may be a bit of a, a loophole here, Mario, that I'm, I'm not promoting non-members of clubs at all, but if you're doing it learn to row, I don't think you need to necessarily, if, if you're using that angle from RV's perspective, I think you can, uh, you don't have to be a current Yeah, if it's a come and try member. thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so what yeah. I'm getting at is for those that that their membership may have lapsed or what have you, and they have a, a single skull, they can still come up and have a row. And I'm, I'm pretty sure on that. I'm, yes, yes, I guess so. They just have to tear it up with me, I suppose. We know. Yeah, yeah. Be, we sign, usually go sign out their life know. away on a waiver of some sort. I'd say. <laughs> There's probably a waiver in the entry thing, anyway, isn't there? There always is on these things. It's probably all there. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I wrote a waiver because I I said if you're a member of the Ryan Victoria, then oh, you yeah, can... okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah, so that's how I, I yeah. went around that. I didn't <clears throat> wave is and that. Um, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I, yeah. No, I don't no, want to take, no, any take the fun out of sport, I think. But anyway, <laughs> let's not let's not get into that discussion. We'll be here for the next five hours if you start me yeah. on that one, lawyer yeah. from sport. But anyway, now look, that's great. Oh, let, let's wind up because um, people will get bored listening to too much of us talking because we, we could go for about another three hours easily. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Well, well, I want to thank you for the opportunity, yeah. uh, Guy. You, you've, oh, no. you've been a great supporter from the start, and uh, it's a pity I'm not going to be able to see you because I did, you know, I did want to share a drink with you, and uh, well, that's we'll, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly do that another time. Don't worry about that. Yeah, we will. We we'll still got the rowing season ahead of us. E- exactly. Um, and, so. and as you know, I'm not adverse to a quiet ale. <laughs> I know we've been talking about it, but the last time it didn't happen, so no. we have to make sure it does happen. Yeah, a- absolutely, absolutely. And look, best of luck on the uh, 31st of August at uh, 9 a.m. race start. Well, that's the that's the plan. It may, you know, yeah. don't want to get too serious about these things. It's a fun thing, obviously. Yeah, um, four and a half. I think that's one thing we might problem. change for next year. We might make it a later start. I've had a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, you know, why don't you make it a later start? Well, well, well also, yeah. if you are quite protected, you know, you're talking about the uh, the environment around there that is quite wind protected. Yeah, you could yeah. start it later without too much fear of a bit of breeze coming up, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, I will. Next year, probably be a 10 o'clock start, and then it'll yeah. get later and later. <laughs> and get later, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when you turn into a two day event, the Sunday will be a 12, a 2 p.m. start. You know? 2 p.m. start, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Give people time to recover from the Saturday. Exactly, no, that's, yeah. that's great. Um, absolutely best of luck. For anyone keen, you can obviously just Google Lake Yield and Rowing Club. 
um, you'll find plenty of information about it. The Grand Ponderosa Cup on the 31st of August. You want to get on board. I reckon it's going to be a ripper. And um, best of luck, Mario, and to your a team of fellow Lake Yildon people who will be obviously digging deep yeah. to help out on the on the on the day and all yeah. in the night. Um, well, we had we have a, a few volunteers coming from other clubs as well. We yeah. have people coming from Essendon to help us out, oh, yeah. Yeah, good. and also from Powerhouse yep. coming to help us out. So. It's going to be a team effort and yeah. uh, there's so many people who want to make it a success. I, yeah, I, I imagine, I mean, certainly anyone I've spoken to, they want it to work. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it makes it easy to spread the word when everyone wants it to be a success. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I love the rowing community and I thank you and I thank all of them, you know, no, for their no, support. No problem. Happy to, uh, happy to help where, wherever I can. So anyway, well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, we will probably chat again afterwards because i'll be interested to hear about how it all goes because i'll be having some yeah. serious fomo on that that weekend because i reckon it'll be a great event so best yeah. of luck mario and all of you and i hope you enjoy it so thank, thank you so you much guy no worries mario. speak to you again soon mate will do See cheers you. bye